So, welcome to this lecture on uh, programmable logic devices in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture we have seen uh, basically the basic idea behind this uh, evolution that is using the memory as a programmable logic uh, that was way back maybe 20-25 years back and uh, the evolution of it like um, from the PROM to the pa PLA to the PAL and we have started seeing uh, one device which is representative not much use but then as I said um, it enables us to understand the basic architecture uh, so that we can build and when it comes to the, the complex PLDs uh, it is very easy to understand that is that is why we are going through it. So, let us quickly glance at the, the last uh, lecture slides. So, basic idea uh, in, a, in a, a programmable logic device is to use memory as a programmable logic and I said that suppose you want to implement this x, x or y two variables then you take a two address line memory with one bit. So, two address lines will have four locations and the data line is used as output. You write the truth table of the function you want to implement um, in this memory and um, that is you know if the memory is in the write mode um, you supply the address through the data line you can write the location and when you use it as a logic it is in read mode. So, you supply the inputs like 0 0 then uh, the data line will get uh, the 0 value when it is 0 1 gets 1 and so on. So, basically you write the truth table in a memory with uh, the appropriate size and use the uh, address as input data as uh, the output and the earlier and uh, as I said SRAM cannot be used because it has to be programmed um, at the power on and we, when you need a non volatile uh, kind of memory the, the solution was to use a PROM this programmable read only memory and uh, where the, this is an address decoder. So, you have A1 and A0 it is you are taking a 4 location 2 bits and it, it this AND gate is the one which gives all the min terms or the locations and the programmable this is a, a fixed OR and we uh, program the location the truth table by um, retaining this fuse or blowing the fuse. If you want a 0 you blow the fuse then it will be grounded. If it is 1 you retain the fuse so when that gate is high you get a high voltage ok that is a basic idea. And as I said um, when um, say when you program 1 and 1 in these two location and when you give 0 1 this will be 1 and this output will be 0 uh, because only one min term will be high then if there is no diode there will be a short circuit to avoid the reverse uh, flow uh, this diode is put everywhere ok. And the fuse itself is blown by applying a negative voltage here for a short duration that will uh, force it to force uh, larger current through the fuse to blow it it is a one time operation. So, it is a, a negative pulse maybe of say if the supply voltage is 5 volt then you apply minus 5 volt depending on the rating ok that is it. So, it is a fixed OR and a fixed AND and programmable OR. So, N input will have 2 N vertical lines, 2 N AND gates each AND gate will have the N inputs which is connected to uh, the appropriate um, lines to form the min terms. But we said that this was kind of used for address uh, chip select decoding where many a times only one um, AND gate is used even in, in boolean function you do not need all the 2 rates when min terms you need only part of them. So, the next step was to reduce the number of AND gates and when you reduce it has to be made programmable it cannot be fixed that means each AND gate will have connection to all the vertical lines all the inputs and complements. Uh, with some kind of programmability, um, but that enables one to not only implement uh, the min terms, but the product term that means 
you don't have to worry about a1 bar a0 bar in your boolean equation if it can be minimized for some reason say you have these two terms and can be minimized to a1 bar then you need to connect only a1 bar um to the and gate this can be kind of uh blown or disconnected so that allows us to use the product term and that was the next step so this was the basic idea you have a programmable and uh, where you can program not only mean terms but the product term and programmable or and that was called pla programmable logic array and then uh, it turns out that if you have say three and gates um it's possible to disable one and gate by retaining all the connection so uh, effectively there is no much need for this um the programmable or with uh, with a lot of programming overhead so that was the next uh, evolution so you had uh, this was the last in the in the evolution the pal programmable array logic where you have and gates with programmable connection to all all the inputs and its complement but some fixed number of and gate connected to an or gate so it was possible to use um, say for o1 to implement a boolean function of up to 3 product terms if you have only 2 then you disable this and gate we will see that how that is done so that is the evolution it started with prom which is programmable read only memory with a fixed and all the two raised to an uh, min terms programmable or you are programming the the content then the programmable and and programmable or pla which turns out that is an overkill this can be somehow absorbed in this um, structure so that was the programmable and and fixed or and next uh, this is where we kind of stop we have taken uh the first uh, kind of devices which came about by amd and texas instruments and um even few companies probably they don't exist now and um this was a basic structure so you have you can see that you have 32 vertical lines that means 16 inputs and its complement and you can see there are nine dedicated 10 dedicated inputs and two dedicated output one on top and one at the bottom and six ios which can be used as output or input so that 10 plus 6 is the 16 and 8 is eight outputs okay two dedicated and six ios so um uh, naturally this ios are counted against the input as well as output l indicates uh, this uh, active low output so it means that if you want to implement um y then you have to implement y bar as the and or part that need to be taken care in the tool and you can see that each suppose you take this section you have seven and gates each has 32 inputs uh, but this is a wired and gate we will see that it's not that it's a single and gate with 32 input wired and gate and um you have a tri state gate with the enable which an and gate controls it so uh, you can permanently enable by kind of removing all the connection then there is a pull up which will make this one and this will be one this will be permanently kind of enable and you want to permanently do then you can what you can do is that you can retain all the connections so even if there is one input which is connected uh say a the a and a bar is connected and it will be zero all the time it will be cut off okay so we will have a look at a detailed view of uh this section uh to understand the architecture that's what we have stopped as i said to enable it you blow all the all the connection then it is high uh, you retain all the connection then the and gate output will be zero the same technique is used suppose you have a boolean function with only three product terms then you implement that you know you give um says so the inputs at the input then program the connection to implement the the various product terms 1 2 3 but you don't need 4 5 6 and 7 what you do is that you retain all the connections uh in these and gates then these will be zero and that's kind of disable only these three will go to the 
uh, because this is 0 so it has no effect and and you get a function of 3 product terms okay. And um, this is what we have seen last time this structure as I said is very very elegant very uh, useful okay. So, you have a tri state gate with enable uh, a product term controlling that enable and at the output there is looks like a feedback uh, to this structure. So, that that adds you know that 6 adds to this uh, 10 plus 6 16 and you have 32 uh, 16 inputs and it is complement 32 vertical lines okay. So, you, you should know that every AND gate has um, can form a product term of any of this 32 okay 16 and its complement and you see here now this has multiple uses okay. Now um, obviously this can be used as output uh, where you permanently enable this then um, by say blowing all the connection then this is enabled this is always an output okay. And uh, suppose you want to use it as an input then what you do is that retain all the connections uh, then even if there is one input at least you have to have one input to be able to use it and then the output will be 0 this is cut off. So, all this will be a waste it will be permanently cut off but then this can be used as an input. That is a case where maybe you have a circuit with more than 10 inputs say you have 12 inputs but you have lesser number of outputs. So, that uh, I mean that is good because we do not have so many outputs but we need some input pins then this can be disabled and it can be used as an input okay. And uh, this goes waste of course but then uh, you get one additional input that is an idea. But more than that you know so it can be used as output it can be used as input but another uh, option is to use it as an IO under the control of this product term okay. Suppose uh, for whatever reason this is connected to a shared bus or a CPU bus for whatever uh, logic then you see suppose a CPU has a read bar. So, we connect read bar to this signal. So, it is available here and we assume that read bar as such is connected to this AND gate okay. So, when the read bar is low this is low. So, this will be cut off then it is used as an input. When the read bar is high only one input is connected this is high and this is an output. So, naturally uh, you know you can interface this to a, a processor bus need not be a processor bus you know it need not be read bar it can be some product term some you can put a condition if this condition and some other condition or some other condition. I mean and of various conditions then you can implement that uh, under that condition that will be um, output or input depending on the need. So, um, it can be output it can be input it can be IO, but uh, you see that this if you look at instead of uh, you know thinking of it as a separate thing like output or input you can view it as this output is coming back to this this whole um, logic okay. So, it shows that this as a node can be used with the uh, you know in the in the other uh, along with the other product term. The, the use is that suppose you have a boolean function with uh, say 10 product terms then we are not able to implement that here because there are only 7 product terms. So, it tells us that you can cascade you know you can have 7 product terms implemented in this section say the output is inverted but it does not matter it gets you know the second bubble second inverter there is a buffer in this line inverter in this line and that inverter you get that signal and that can be connected to this first AND gate here okay. Uh, so, you get that 7 product terms in this OR gate you implement suppose 3 additional product terms in this section. So, you get 10 product terms. So, when um, there is a need for more than um, the, uh, the product terms accommodated in one section 
you can use this structure to cascade uh, to get more product terms. So, that is an additional use of this uh, particular structure. Um, again once again this tells us you know going back tells us that this can be used as a feedback ok. So, uh, one simple example is that you think of a cross couple NAND latch ok. I hope uh, we have discussed this in the uh, at the beginning maybe somewhere. So, you have a NAND gate and uh, two NAND gates the output of one NAND gate drives the input of other NAND gates. It, it gets one set input and this get uh, one reset input this output is feeding back the other input other NAND gauge input. So, straight away you think there is an input which can be connected to one of the AND gate and the AND gate output goes through this inverter come back through this inverter goes to the input of the second AND gate and that AND gate also get another input which can be connected because there are so many inputs and this goes and get double inversion and connect back to this, this NAND gate. So, uh, using two sections uh, you can implement a latch if it is required ok. Um, of course, there will be lot of AND gates wasted, but it can be done. So, this allows output input IOS and the cascading and feedback everything is is kind of made possible by just a simple uh, you know elegant architecture. Uh, so, it is it is quite nice and and um, so we will summarize this when um, an IO structure you want to use as an output you have to enable the tri state gate and it is enabled by blowing all the input uh, connections of the control AND gate which is nothing but I call this as a control AND gate which controls the enable of the tri state and uh, which is nothing but a wired AND with pull up. So, it is not uh, an AND gate with multiple input it is a single wire which is wired AND we will see that how that is formed with a pull up. So, if you remove all the connection then it is pulled up one then the output is one and when you want to use that as an input you disable the tri state gate retain all connections of the control AND gate then A and A bar is kind of 0 and you can program when you can use it as an IO under the control of a control product term in the control AND gate ok. And um, you are able to disable any AND gate uh, suppose in the 7 AND gates you can disable 3 of them if you want only use 4 by retaining all the input connections in those AND gates. You can cascade multiple section using if you have more than 7 product terms in this particular thing you can use it as a feedback uh, example is to form a latch. So, uh, lot of uh, you know uses for this particular uh, simple structure which al allows us to do many things. Um, so, uh, one uh, point about the cascading suppose you have to implement a function um, which is an OR of um, 17 product terms sum of products uh, there are 17 product terms. So, one way of doing is that say in a 16 L8 kind of device is that you implement 7 product terms like 1, 2, 3 up to 7. So, you, you OR it and what you do is that this output comes back here through double inversion and that output is connected to one of the AND gate ok. Then you have 6 um, product terms because one AND gate is used for cascading then you implement you are left with 6, 7 uh, plus 6 you have 13 we need 4 more. So, again you take this output uh, bring it back here connect to the next section AND gate and the remaining 4. Uh, 4 product terms are programmed in the last section you disable 2 AND gates and this 16 pin number 16 is a boolean function or uh, a sum of the 17 product terms ok. Um, but there is a problem with this because if you start uh, look at the input here from this input you have one pass delay come back here then you have second pass delay 
then come back here you have the third pass delay and if you, you can imagine if there are some 25 product terms you, you eat up one more section and you get four passes delay and if each, each pass is 5 nanosecond then you have a 20 nanosecond delay. So there is a better way of doing it um, that is uh, instead of go on chaining like that what you do is that you implement 7 product terms in one section, 7 in uh, second section and this feedback comes here, this feedback comes here. Now this is connected to an AND gate in the third section, the second one is connected to an AND gate in the, in the third section. So you have now 7 plus 7 14, now the remaining 3 product terms you put in the last, last um, section and you get uh, 17 product term but if you see the worst case number of passes is 1 like that 2 and 1 and 2 okay. So you in a 2 pass you get um, all kind of all possibilities and if you think of 7 uh, kind of pro, uh, you know AND gates in a section it is possible to cascade 7 such section. Uh, you know cascaded to an 8th section. So you will get 49 product terms in a in a 2 pass okay. So but if we had gone chaining like that then you have 7, 6, 6 you know you take the same number of 8 section then uh, there will be 6 into 7 uh, 42 plus 7 49 product terms but you see there will be 7 pass delay you know 7 pass um, uh, delay will be there, so um, that you should keep in mind when you when we when the tool cascade, it cascade like that. So, um, so that is uh, so when you are cascading, uh, like if you cascade like seven plus six plus four, you have three passes, you have three section delay, and if you calculate eight section, then you have the first is seven, and the next six is you know. Uh, next 7 you can have 6 product terms total 49 product terms but there are 8 passes. So you will have lot of delays but if you do 2 pass with 8 section you need only kind of you can still implement 49 product terms 2 passes. So um, the tools uh, when they map the circuit to this they always make sure that it is it is kind of balanced it is it is always you know uh, like 7 plus 7 goes on and combine in a, in a last section everything together okay depending on the, the constraints of the number of product terms in each section um, uh, you know which is available okay. So that is about the cascading then we look at the, the symbol PLDs at least earlier you had something called uh, device called PAL 16 L8 which we have seen. PAL 16 R4 okay now this is a device which has some registers of flip flops at the output which allows you to implement sequential circuit and data path mainly counters and finite state machine and 16 R8 where all the output has registers and all these are not available now it is it is of kind of um, academic interest to understand maybe the 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 only device which is being used nowadays and the the complex pldes so the pal 22v10 is a much more flexible version like which combines all these together you know that is that pal 22v10 we will see that architecture and um, now the atmel manufactures this pal 22v10 uh, still may be useful um, in in very small uh, process like uh, glue logic uh, when you are kind of you want some kind of logic where um, uh, you know it need to be programmable then um, you can use that. Um, it, it may be useful because a, a small amount of logic can be put and when you look at the, the simple PLDs the features of the PLDs are it allows wide decoding okay that means that the AND gates have you know 16 inboards and 16 of it complements okay. Now um, it is very rarely used uh, it is mainly 
for a chip select decoding of memory and peripherals it was used but many application does not require such wide decoding and in a, in a chip select decoding uh, suppose you have a memory of 1k or 2k uh, then you, you will use say 10 address lines rest of the address line is decoded as a, a to, to map it to appropriate location in the, in the memory space and that is decoded using the chip select decoder okay. So that time this was useful but um, not anymore. So maybe why that is not used if you analyze uh, if you look at the earlier scenario was like this you know you have a microprocessor you have peripherals even presently the, the connect I mean interfacing is similar um, but earlier um, uh, the, the memory or peripheral used to occupy a small address space and you need a chip select decoding. So you have a data bus and a control bus like read bar, write bar then some address line depending on whether it is memory or peripheral this could be few or more and chip select decoding will handle the rest of the address line okay. So this is where the, the, the one major use of the PAL but now if you look at uh, most of the processors we use uh, are kind of SOCs like embedded processors uh, maybe the desktop processors have some kind of um, uh, additional chips one or two or that they are also going into, into a single chip along with the processor. Uh, so they all have the built in um, memory and peripherals like most of the these have uh, built in memory and peripherals. They also have built in configurable chip select decoding. So chip select decoding is, is part of the SOC that is configurable yeah, you, can, you can change the, uh, the, uh, the address uh, the memory map uh, by configuring it. So there is less use of SPLDs uh, like PAL 16 L8 okay. So because all these are built in to the single chip and definitely not everything is built in you need some additional peripherals like you say uh, take the case of Wi-Fi um, many a times that is an external uh, kind of dongle or external peripheral uh, but they also nowadays uh, whatever external peripherals are working on serial interface okay. So you have a serial clock the processor give a clock and there is a data line which is IO so you can read or write and addressing is part of the data frame that means um, it is possible to connect multiple peripherals or multiple slaves and this master can address through the, uh, uh, through the data frame okay and even it is possible uh, to have multiple masters controlling the, the peripheral and all that. So in this scheme of thing there is hardly any need for a kind of decoding. Uh, so that is why these kind of devices are less um, useful nowadays and that is the effect of um, kind of uh, large scale integration um, uh, of the, um, uh, the circuit in a single chip. So you, you must have heard about uh, this SPI or I2C which are serial protocols which is very much used. I am just uh, telling you about why uh, these kind of devices are uh, not found nowadays you know. So, um, so what we have seen now you know in the, the, the beginning part was basically um, a, the IO structure which can be used as um, output input IO it can be used for cascading and when you cascade it. Uh, you try to do a, a the tool try to do a two pass cascading than a chaining which will incur a lot of delays and uh, you can even form a feedback and we have seen some uh, earlier simple PLDs like 16 L8, 16 R4, 16 R8 and 22 V10 which is, which is available now Atmel makes it and why uh, these devices are not much used is because the SOCs have built in 
uh, peripherals, memory and built in chip select decoding and when you use external peripherals many a times uh, it has a, a serial interfacing where addressing is part of the, the data frame. Uh, so, which kind of uh, um, you know remove the need uh, of these kind of devices. So, let us look at uh, the next device in the line. This is called 16R4 as I said uh, this we use it as a stepping stone to understand uh, the, the later devices ok. So, it is pretty much similar. So, you have um, 8 sections and or with 7 product terms with OR gate a tri state enable. So, here 2 top one is same as 16 L8, 2 bottom one is also same as 16 L8. But what is uh, uh, different is that in the middle 4 section the output of the and or gate goes to a flip flop ok. And the flip flops are clocked by a pin, pin number 1 which is a common clock and uh, the output is going through a tri state gate which is enabled by a pin ok. So, uh, this is not of much interest so it can be used if you are con connecting to a bus and this can be the, the, the control line for uh, reading or writing uh, things like that. So, this is uh, hardly uh, uh, of much use so this you can imagine as kind of pass through at least to understand. But the important thing to note is that you have some kind of combination logic preceding I mean preceding the flip flop or combination logic uh, it follows a you know followed with the flip flop that means register and you see the Q bar of the flip flop is going back to this, this logic section as input to the AND gate ok. So, now that tells you that if you imagine a counter in a counter architecture we have seen we have a next state logic which decode the present state and in a complex counter you will have various input like up down load and all that. So, it is possible that with this structure now you can have suppose you, you want to implement a 4 bit counter you can imagine this as q3, q2, q1, q0 ok. Now, all that q3, q2, q1, q0 and their inversions are here. So, if you take this d3 then d3 can be a function of q3, q2, q1, q0 any function of that you know up to 7 product terms. So, it shows that you can implement a 4 bit counter we have to we have to work out the equation for the counter, but believe me that as far as a 4 bit counter is concerned uh, it can be implemented ok. Um, you can work out the equation and expand it it is possible to implement a 4 bit binary up counter uh, using this structure because this each section act like a next state logic which decode the present state from various because everything is available and you have various inputs. So, that is a next state logic this is the state flip flop which is clocked by a single clock ok. So, this allows you to uh, implement a, a counter. Now ok maybe I will uh, show some pictures of it then uh, you will understand. It is even possible that you can implement an FSM ok. Uh, if you remember FSM is nothing but a counter with an output decoder ok counter like structure you have next state logic you have the present state. Now, you know that the FSM what it requires is an output logic which decode the present state and input. Now, you take this section where all the present state like q0, q1, q2, q3 is available here. So, in principle you can use a form an output which is a decode of uh, the q3, q2, q1, q0 in this. And if it is a melee output you know you have various inputs you can give input and you can still decode uh, you have the inputs available because all vertical lines are available here the present states are available here. So, it can be uh, you can form an output logic here and you get uh, uh, you can try to implement an FSM ok. 
what remain to see uh, is a data path, data path is a register then the output of that comes a combination logic then follow it up with a register. So, even a data path uh, in principle can be at least uh, there are hardly any registers here suppose you think of an 8 bit it is not possible but I am showing a 1 bit but maybe you can expand it to if there were 8 registers at least you can think of a 4 register followed with uh, some computation um, in the combination circuit followed with 4 registers can be done in this structure. So, uh, this is an expansion of it uh, PAL 16 R 4. So, as I said there are maximum uh, input 16 because there are say 2 to 9 which is 8 plus 1 um, 4 uh, you know all these are inputs you know. So, uh, there is 8 plus 8 16 input and registers 4 registers you know that is what the 16 are for. And if you look at each section as 7 product terms OR gate common clock uh, the D the OR gate uh, output goes to D and the Q goes as an output and the Q bar is fed back it does not matter because um, both Q bar and its inversion is available. So, it really does not matter whether you feed back the Q bar or the Q it is all same you know depending on what you what the device gives the programming changes you know the Q the, the inversion changes that is all um, uh, about this device. And if you look at a data path as I said we will see how the uh, how the standard structures map to this particular device. Say take a data path where you have a set of flip flops followed with a combination circuit to the destination register. I will just assume that it is a single bit for convenience ok, but you can try to expand it to multiple bits. Uh, so, here you have some inputs you know you can use all these inputs. So, input is available in this vertical lines here 1. 2 and its complement 3 and its complement. Now, those input uh, can be one of the input can be connected to the to the one of the flip flop or a combination of them and you see that output is coming back into this, this, this structure this array and that can be you know combined here to form some product terms and like a combination circuit and that goes to the destination register and both get the same clock and you can implement this. And as I said I am just showing one bit, but you can imagine uh, if there are 8 registers you know you have 4 registers multiple input you combine them and uh, this structure can be implemented ok. Now, if you take an FSM uh, I have already told you there are state flip flops the present state and input is combined in next state logic. Suppose you take uh, say uh, Q2, Q1, Q0, then uh, this fed back Q2, Q1, Q0 input will form D2, D1, D0, and the same Q2, Q1, Q0 go to some section to generate various output. So, that is shown here. So, you have I uh, say I am only showing one bit, say the Q0 is fed back here, but you can imagine Q1, Q2, and all is available in this array, and now you can form D0 as a function of. Q2, Q1, Q0. So, this is the next state logic this one is the next state logic and that goes to this register. So, you have input and the feedback is combined in the next state logic goes to the present state and that present state is is, is decoded along with the input uh, to generate uh, the Millet or Moore output. So, this is the next state logic and this is the output logic ok. Of course, um, if there is a flip flop here then you can have a registered output. Um, we have discussed why uh, there is a requirement of a registered output when there are uh, glitches in the output um, due to transitory state then you can have the output registering. So, that is possible if you uh, use a similar kind of section even for the output then you get automatically the registered output. And uh, it does not matter whether you view it like this 3 block diagram or 2 block diagram it is all same like if you view it like that then instead of viewing this next state logic and output logic as separate we can view it as a single logic where part of the logic is, is used for 
uh, the next say decoding part of the logic is used as as kind of output and that shows you know you have a huge uh, logic section some of it goes to the flip flop some of it goes as output and that is what is shown here you know uh, you have a logic and some of it goes to the flip flop some of it goes direct and this is a, the same structure you have flip flops feedback into an array uh, that array combines array is logic which combines input and the present state and some goes to the flip flop back some goes at the output the exactly same thing you know you have an array where input comes is available here the the feedback is available here and some is some part is used as next state logic which goes to the uh, to the flip flop and some part is used as output logic which goes as a combination output exactly same thing um, is is so you can say uh, the structure of the pal is like this you know which shows that uh, the the pal kind of structure is very useful for finite state machine and counters and things like that but it may not be good as a data path because there are not too many uh, flip flops okay so um, one other thing you should know that um, the advantage of uh, the pal structure is that it has very wide decoding okay and there are a lot of product terms available many a times in even we are going to see a, a practical device where there is more product terms than than available in a 16 uh, l8 or 16 r4 so that can be used uh, uh, to kind of reduce the delay i can show you an example suppose you have an output called x a, a function called x which is ab bar plus cd you have only two product terms and in one pass you know one section you can implement that suppose you have a second output which is nothing but y is x plus ef plus ghi so it has already implemented x plus two other product terms so if you look at it um, a, you you can say you can implement x here okay and x is fed back here and which can be taken to an and gate and you implement the next two product terms okay so that is what is shown here x then ef and ghi so x is implemented here so that is connected to this and gate then ef and ghi bar is implemented here okay and rest is disabled so you get y but you know that in that case y will incur a two pass delay like that so it will be good instead of doing that you substitute this x because after all we have seven product terms uh, you substitute the value of x in the y then y is nothing but ab bar cd plus this so four product terms so instead of kind of cascading it you copy that uh, whatever product terms here because there are um, free product terms and you implement the next three here you will get it in one shot so most of the tools used to uh, kind of do that uh, whenever there is a node like that is created it was automatically substituted which uses unused uh, product terms if unused product terms are there this substitution was done it will reduce the delay okay but um, this has a problem you know the in some cases um, like take the case of an XOR gate um, see here the whatever we have is only an and or structure so if you have an xor you have to uh, kind of uh, transform that into a sum of product um, uh, terms then only you can implement it it has to be and or okay so that is a limitation you you have no xor gate you have only and and or gates everything has to be transformed into sop form so if you have a x or b then um, then you will end up with a b bar or a bar b two product terms but if you have a x or b x or c you can expand that it will become four product terms okay so if you have up to n product terms okay i have shown i should have given some indexes uh, definitely uh, a to n is not then okay 
uh, but okay uh, you, I hope you understand that if there are n uh, xor uh, like uh, 1 to n then you have 2 raised to n minus 1 product terms okay. And you know that the priority encoders adders and subtractors use xor and if you do not if you do this substitution business uh, there can be lot of um, kind of uh, exponential um, growth of the product terms and it cannot be accommodated like if, if the tool blindly does it and then start cascading it it will waste lot of um, product terms lot of section and uh, that is not good. So many a times there are attribute to turn off the virtual substitution this substitution business when you have this particular case uh, pathological cases where it goes out of hand um, the substitution is not a good idea. But default most cases the substitution works very nicely other than these special cases you can try to kind of expand maybe the adder equation in terms of the, the product terms and see how it goes okay maybe a 4 bit adder uh, you can try to expand that okay. Now let us come to uh, the most um, only available uh, simple PLD device which is PAL 22 V10. Um, this has the same I am only showing half of the PAL 22 V10 oh, I cannot show you um, it is huge. So there are instead of 8 section as the name suggests there are 10 outputs. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 exactly a replica a mirror image is underneath okay. It is a mirror image um, kind of a, a flip okay. It is a it is a vertical flip of this is down below and you see so there are 10 section and the first thing to notice is that. Uh, the number of product terms are variable okay. In the previous uh, devices we have seen that there are 7 product terms but here in the top section has 8, 10, 12, 14 and 16 okay. And then again back 16, 12, 14, 10, 8 you know. So that is how it goes 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 when it comes here it is a, it's a lot of lot of product terms okay. Now you see there are 22 inputs that means there are 12 uh, inputs 10 IOs. So these are 5 section 5 section is below 10 IOs so that 10 plus 12 is 22 input maximum and these IOs can be used as output so 10 output and this V shows you know tells that it is variable product term okay. Now the next thing is that. Um, you have basically a flip flop with some additional circuit okay. We will see what is inside there uh, um, here and it is called a macro cell because it is a uh, more than a flip flop it is a it is a macro which include flip flop and many other things. So you have a clock pin a pin which can be used as a clock for all the macro cell or all the flip flop. Now, uh, before even going into the detail of this section I want to say that if you want to use this as a combinational section that means you, you do not want the and or output to go to a flip flop and, and you know register the output of the flip flop you want it directly there is a mux inside by which you can bypass that flip flop okay. So suppose uh, in some particular application. Uh, it is a completely combinational application there is no sequential element. Then you will be bypassing all the macro cell in that case this clock input is a waste. So you can see that that clock is available as an input. So if it is not used as a clock it can be used as an input for a combinational input okay. Maybe there is a less use um, uh, for clock as an input to this array because if you add uh, the clock with something. Uh, which in a proper synchronous design uh, may not have much use. So this this is given as an input if all the sections are not used as a combinational section okay. So this is a macro cell which includes a flip flop also include 
um, uh, a bypass ok. Now you can see that uh, the feedback here it can come from two places internally it can come from the fifth flop but if you are bypassing the fifth flop then um, that feedback is not useful then uh, this pin is fed back in that case you know like 16 L8 it can be used as output input IO cascading all that applies you know. So it is a you can say it is a combination of a 16 L8 and 16 R8 kind of structure everything put together. So that is a kind of um, advantage of this 22 V10 very flexible it combines all those functionalities you do not need an additional device probably that is why uh, this device uh, at least manufacturers are making this device uh, it, it, it kind of uh, combine all the advantages of the earlier uh, devices ok. So, uh, so that is the device and you see similarly you have the tri state gate and enable uh, by a control product but in addition to this you should note that at the top is an AND gate which can be a, a kind of decoding of uh, all the 20 inputs or its complement and that goes to the asynchronous reset of the register. So, you can in principle say give a reset signal here and you can reset at the power on all the uh, uh, you know uh, all the flip flops and it need not be a simple reset it can be a combination of condition like your multiple uh, condition uh, and uh, depending on those condition you can reset it. Similarly I actually which is not shown in the picture is another AND gate which comes at the bottom of the device uh, at least in the schematic I do not know the real device whether it comes at the bottom but uh, in the, the, the picture it comes at the bottom. So, uh, that is an AND gate um, the output of which goes to the synchronous preset of uh, all the flip flops. So, uh, if that is one then at the next clock uh, all the flip flops all the outputs are set to one and here as soon as it is asserted uh, it reset the flip flop ok. So, I hope you get an idea of the, uh, the kind of flexibility of the device a variable product terms 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and a replica. Uh, you have 12 dedicated inputs, uh, 10 IOs and uh, 10 macro cell the flip flop gets a clock and the macro cell allow bypassing uh, the flip flop and there is a feedback from the flip flop or the combination section. There is an AND gate for asynchronous reset there is an AND gate for synchronous preset ok. So, now let us look at this macro cell which is shown here that is shown in this part ok. So, this is the, uh, the AND gate which is the top one which is controlling the tri state gate. Uh, this is the uh, say if you take the top section. So, there are 8 product terms or gate that goes to flip flop and this is the clock this is asynchronous reset this is synchronous uh, set ok. And you see here uh, there is a 4 to 1 mux ok. There are 2 select lines which is pulled up and connected to a fuse ok. So, by retaining the fuse both are kind of 0 0 if you blow 1 say S 0 then you get 0 1. So, by blowing or retaining the fuse you can choose 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, you can choose any of this and you see here you have the possibility of this output or its complement coming here or the Q or the Q bar coming here ok. So, uh, you might wonder why that is required because either you need this output or the registered version of it. But this scheme allows some optimization because uh, suppose you have to implement Y ok is some sum of product terms. Now, you know that if you have to do that there is an inversion here. So, one way of doing is that you implement y and then you select a path like that. So, you get the y you implement y here ok and it comes like that y bar and one more inversion you get the y ok. But 
assume that say why when you try to implement you end up with say 12 product terms which cannot be implemented in 8 AND gates. Suppose you take y bar it turns out that it is kind of minimized into 7 product terms. You apply De Morgan theorem then you end up with 7 product terms. So at that time you implement y bar okay, and use this path then y bar is inverted you get y. So depending on whether y is implemented here or y bar is implemented here you can whichever is less number of product terms you can choose uh, you know if it is y then take this path y bar you take this path okay. Same thing applies to the q and q bar okay. So this kind of um, structure allows you kind of a product term minimization okay. Uh, it is a great thing again nowadays may not be a big thing but at the, the time of um, these devices available that kind of saving was very great and you can see the um, depending on this fuse you can you get a feedback because this is the S1 so if it is kind if it is blown then one then these two paths are selected that means the flip flop is selected. So this is blown then you choose this path you know you, you choose this path otherwise if it is 0 uh, this particular combinational path is chosen. So depending on if when you choose these two path uh, this is the path goes through the feedback marks when you choose these two paths at the output then this is the, the, the feedback because so this is like a 16 R4. So I hope you understand now uh, the architecture of uh, 22 V10 um, very quickly I want to summarize you have variable product terms asynchronous reset product terms synchronous preset product terms you have combinational or registered output you have product term optimization by inversion. So I am showing an example say this y has 4 product terms and when you take y bar uh, you, you kind of apply De Morgan's theorem then you end up with 2 product terms. And, and there is a timing uh, maybe we will talk about uh, this timing um, in the next lecture. So you have propagation delay you have uh, you know output enable and disable timing and the flip flop delay like uh, C, C, TCQ setup and hold time and the reset delay and all that. These are the, uh, the kind of timing parameters in the case of 16 l it is just uh, a one section delay there is nothing more to it. So I think uh, uh, here we have um, looked at the 22 V10 the most versatile useful device which is even available today. It combines the combinational and the registered part of you know both 16 L8 and 16 R8. You can use it as a combination or registered. So you, you have all possibilities you know you can implement combination logic, you can implement FSM, you can implement counter, you, you can even have you know registered output or a combination output for finite seat machine. So it is it's quite and you have a, uh, in the largest section you have 16 product terms, you have reset available, preset available. So um, quite a useful device. Um, so this is only simple PLD which is available. Um, we will now uh, look I think we in the next uh, lectures we can go to the, uh, to the complex PLD having understood um, this. So I think um, I stop here this uh, part of the lecture. Uh, please revise, um, try to understand this architecture uh, well. So I wish you all the best and thank you.